Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Autism Exploration Series. I am Emily Sampone. I am the Clinical Director of Field Services here at Verbal Beginnings. Verbal Beginnings' mission is to change lives for our clients, our families, and our professionals. And we do that through our Pledge of Care, which is our promise to you to provide effective treatment through compassionate care. We also strive to achieve our mission through our core values. And one of our core values is education, teaching families valuable ways to work with your child. And that's why we decided to start these series. Additionally, you'll see on the bottom of the screen there, a few different seals. One of them is the seal from the Behavioral Health Center of Excellence and the seal from the Autism Commission on Quality. All of these seals represent the hard work and focus that we place to ensure that Verbal Beginnings is providing quality care through the highest of standards. Hey, Justine, you can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. I also wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to the services that we offer here at Verbal Beginnings. In addition to our in-home field-based services and center-based ABA services, we also offer diagnostic services, feeding therapy, and social skills programming. Additionally, we encourage you to participate with us today throughout the presentation by using the Q&A feature found at the bottom of your screen. We also offer a closed captioning during this recording, which you can access by navigating to the bottom of your Zoom screen, click the closed captioning button on the bottom of your screen and it should pop up. Okay, well, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our presenter for this evening, Justine. Justine, take it away. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Justine O'Mara, and I'm currently the program manager for Social Beginnings. I have been with Verbal Beginnings for about four and a half years. I started off as in home uh, in home clinical supervisor. And in 2020, I started as an after school Social Beginnings clinical supervisor. Um, I've also been part of the Social Beginnings summer program for the past three years. In the fall of 2022, I got the opportunity to become the Social Beginnings Program Manager. So here I am today. Um, I am a board certified behavior analyst and I have been one for six years. And prior to becoming a BCBA, I was a teacher in the state of Maryland where I held teaching certificates in early childhood education, elementary education, as well as special education. I also have a very, very cute dog, as you can see. Her name is Bailey. Um, she's a golden retriever and I'm obsessed with her. All right, so let's go over today's objectives. The first objective is to understand the benefits of enrolling your child in a summer program. The second objective is to understand the difference between a summer program and a summer camp. The third objective is to understand the potential risk of regression during the summer months. And the fourth objective is to explore the purpose of different summer programs and summer camps. Okay. Now that you know a little bit about me, I kind of want to get to know about uh, a little bit more about you and your child. So how old is your child right now? Um, first option is around two to six. Second is seven to 10. And the third is over 11. Okay, give everyone a couple more seconds. All right. Wow, we have a great mix. We have um, about 47% from two to six, 35% from seven to 10, and 18% over 11. I love to see the variety. Awesome. Okay. The second poll is where do you guys reside? Where do you live? Um, Maryland, Virginia, um, Delaware, Pennsylvania, DC, or out of out of those uh the tri-state area. Okay, so primarily Maryland, about 79%, some Pennsylvania, which is 11%, 11% and DC, 11%. Awesome. Okay. All right. So next question is, tell me about your plans for summer. Um, is your cur child currently enrolled in a summer camp or a summer program? You can just hit yes or no.
Okay, so 19% yes and 81% no. Um, very good to know because this is the time, believe it or not. I know it's February and we just had snow this morning if you were in Maryland or Pennsylvania, maybe some Delaware. Um, we are preparing for summer and this is the time to start enrolling your child in those summer programs because they do tend to fill up fast. Um, so you guys are on the right track. All right. Okay, so another poll, we're gonna get to know each other real well here. Um, what type of summer program have you enrolled your child in the past? Um, they can be an academic, a social or play program, behavioral communication, um, or programs for children with de developmental disabilities. Justine, for some reason that poll is not working. So if everybody wouldn't mind typing into the Q&A box your response out of the different options on the screen, that would be great. And Justine, are you able to see the Q&A on your side? If not, I can read them out loud to you. The the poll? The In the Q&A box, the poll's not working for this one. So I'm gonna have everybody type in their response to the Q&A box below. I so I'll read out some of the responses for you. Yeah, oh, let's see like, it. We have behavioral ABA, uh, we have summer school, ESY, a social camp. The more social skills program, or I'm sorry, social camp have been noted in here as well. Day camps. I see it now, yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, a good variety. Awesome. Okay. All right, so oh, now I can't X out of the Q&A. Hold on. Hold on. It is not letting me X out. There we go. Sorry, guys. All right, I'm going to go back to that slide. Okay, so I just want to kind of dig deeper into some of these. So a day camp would be kind of something such as like YMCA. Um, a sports camp could be a camp that can focus on specific sports or all sports. ESY, it's also known, or sorry, extended school, ex sorry, extended school year is also known as ESY. Um, the, uh, this pro summer program is typically provided by the school for children who usually have an IEP and have known um, shown some sort of academic regression in the past. Special interest programs can be like art, music, dance, if your child is really interested in something specific. And then programs like kids with de developmental disabilities can be programs that focus on social def or specific deficits, such as physical, social, or communication, kind of like our social, um, if you're familiar with our social beginning summer program, our focus is those social deficits. Okay, so the big question here is, why should I enroll my child in a summer program or a camp? One of the most important ones that we're going to be re reviewing today is it supports the prevention of regression. It also provides a, a lot of learning opportunities. Kids can develop new skills such as academic, social, developmental, and language skills. It strengthens previously learned skills as well as strengthening independence. They can learn skills they um, that they, they can learn new skills and can build on them that can benefit them from 10 years from now. Uh, child are in constantly engaged and they're focused and they're kind of decreasing all that screen time um, that they would have during those unstructured activities. Uh, another really important one is developing friendships and strength and social skills. Uh, previously in the summer program that we have uh, here at Verbal Beginnings, uh, I would get lots of emails and phone calls about my child can't stop talking about this so-and-so. Can you please give me their information? Obviously, we have to make sure we're staying HIPAA compliant. So we do have paperwork for parents to sign off for that to happen. Um, but that always really warms my heart that they made a friend um, coming out of the summer program. And a lot of parents, it really, really, really makes their day because they, that's what they strive for with their kids. And another what really important one is maintaining structure um, that they're used to during the school year. So why do kids need structure? Structure allows us to know what to expect. And when we're not focused on what's to come next and we're not worrying about it, we have the ability to focus on what's being taught. And when there isn't structure, kids may also increase in problem behavior in order to control and cope with the unpredictable events that are happening. So it's very important to maintain that structure during those summer months. So let's talk about the regression. Um, the definition of regression is a return to a former or less developed state. There's different types of regression. So for an example, an academic regression could be decreasing in reading level. A behavior regression could be increasing in tantrums um, or decreasing in the replacement behaviors as well. A physical regression 
can be a decrease in fine motor skills, such as cutting or handwriting skills, which they will often be practicing throughout the school year. Uh, developmental can be a decrease in language, such as requesting for items. Um, so who is that more, who's at risk for regression? Children who are more sensitive to transitions and change are going to be more at risk for these regressions, as well as children with developmental or learning disabilities. However, anyone is at risk for regression. I'm going to give an example with myself. I took five solid years of Spanish. I knew it very well when I was in high school and in college and not to age myself, but about 20 years later, I went to Mexico with my husband and the only word I could really remember was huevos, which means eggs, and it did not get me far. Um, and I completely lost those skills. So anyone who goes from, from a, anyone who does not practice a skill for an extended amount of time has the risk of regressing. Um, and another fun fact is you need to repeat something 60 times for it to go into long-term memory. So during that two months, short-term memory is most likely not going to, to um, work for a lot of these skills and kids are going to most likely regress in some areas. Okay, so how can we prevent regression? So regression can occur, as we talked about, when a person does not practice a skill for an extended amount of time. Um, doesn't matter who you are, it can happen. Um, there are a few ways we can prevent regression of skills. So for an example, academic, setting a time aside to work on reading or math um, with worksheets um, during the summer months. Uh, I always stress to ask your teacher if there's any websites that you know they may know that might be helpful. Other great opportunities is kind of doing it in the natural environment. So counting your toys or when you're cooking, using measurements um, and counting how many cups go into the bowl. Those are really great ways to kind of naturally work on those academic skills. In regards to communication, um, work. So communication, you need to work on every single day. So it could be, you know, asking for things and using their words or if they have a device, using a device. Uh, labeling things on a walk at the beach. So taking a walk and saying, oh, I see a bird. And then the kids can say, I see sand or I see shells. That's a really great way to help labeling things. Um, and then also practicing with other families. So uh, generalizing those skills across uh, different people. So they're not only able to do with you, but they're also able to do with their aunts or uncles or grandparents or cousins, as well as their siblings, um, so that they are going to be generalizing that skill and making sure that it sticks and maintains uh, social and play skills. So a good way to strengthen these is have play groups or play dates with friends and families or sometimes neighbors. This is a really great time to strengthen those social skills and get to give them those opportunities, taking them to the playground or the park, doing kind of like family field trips, as I would like to call them, if they, you know, going to the zoo and kind of really working on those social skills. And then the next one is challenging behavior. So this is really important to make sure you're teaching replacement behaviors, um, such as if your child is had enough with an activity and given the opportunity to ask for a break rather than engaging in crying when they're done with the activity. The reason why I say this is because crying, they're going to get out of it and requesting a break to get out of it. And then we'd much rather have them request or functionally tell, tell us when they just need a break. I need a break. You need a break. There's a reason why we have PTO sometimes. It's okay for kids to take break from work. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to pause to see if there's any questions, Emily, in the question box. I haven't seen any pop in yet, but please feel free um, for all of you who are attending this evening to use the Q&A box. If you think you have any questions, you want to make a comment um, within the Q&A box. Um, we're just as a disclaimer, we're not able to give any client specific advice through this type of platform. Um, but if you can ask generalized questions, we're happy to respond. You can keep going, Justine. I'll let right. you know if anything pops up. Okay. So we're going to go with another poll question. Um, what is a common area that you've noticed during the summer months that where your child has regressed? So it could be academic, behavioral, uh, social play, communication, all the above. I added none of the above, um, but I realized I did added that late, Emily. So that's my fault. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. So it looks, we got 0% for academic. Behavioral was a big one. That was 50 at 52%. Social play is 5%. Communication was at 10%. And all the above was 33%. All right. Thank you for all of those who participated. Okay. Oops, sorry, guys. All right. So now we're going to kind of talk about the different camp pro summer programs and camps. Now that we kind of wrapped up regression and the risk of regression, a huge way to prevent that is to kind of enroll your kids in these summer programs or summer camps to ensure that they have those structured times and they are keeping busy through the summer months and that they're preventing that regression. So there is a difference between camps and programs, and that's what we're going to be digging in, into in the next couple of slides. So just some examples of camps are like their sports camps, theme camps, scouting camps, overnight camps. Programs are going to be more like extended school year, the STEM program, special interest programs, or programs with children for developmental uh, disabilities. The summer program here at um, Social Beginning or Verbal Beginnings called Social Beginnings is a um, technically a program. It is not considered a camp, and the reason for that is because. It's a program for children who show deficits in social skills, such as sharing, self-regulation, conversational skills, sportsmanship, teamwork. Those are just a few skills that we work on. It's for kids for ages from three to seven, and it's goal-oriented, and kids are kind of working towards their own goals versus a camp that doesn't isn't really typically goal-oriented. Okay. All right, so now we're going to dig deeper into what is the difference between a summer camp and program. We kind of dug a little bit into it um, in the previous slide. So camp is going to be more theme oriented. Um, they can support the development of relationships and friendships. They're structured and unstructured time, depending on the type of camp. Um, it can be specific to child's unique interests. So we can talk about dance uh, camp. There could be music. There can be art. There could be karate. Um, various different types of camps. Uh, I recently went to a camp expo and I was mind blown at the different types of camps that people could have. And I did not know they exist, but it was very good to know that there's multiple opportunities for your child. And then going towards that program, similar to the social beginning summer program, they're going to be goal oriented. Each child is going to have a goal during that time. It, uh, another positive uh, thing about it, like, uh, camps is that they support the development of relationships and friendships. So that's something that they both do have in common. Um, they support development of age appropriate skills. Again, they're going to be kind of going with that goal oriented. Typically, they do have some sort of curriculum that they follow. Um, if your child does have a, a development of disability, you do have options and some insurance companies will cover it. I do suggest that you talk to um, the program as well as your insurance to see if it is going to be covered. There could be a variety of skill building opportunities, more structured learning opportunities, which we know is very important for kids during the summer months, and it supports the prevention of regression. So programs are going to have a lot more benefits than camps. Um, and it, again, it's all going to depend on what is the best for your child. Okay, so what we're going to talk about a little bit about what's the best for your child when you try to pick a specific camp. My main advice is just make sure it's going to be a positive experience, but you also want to make sure you are prioritizing what is going to benefit your child the most during that two months. The two months is a very fun opportunity for them to build new skills and kind of strengthen skills. Um, but we also want to make sure that it's nothing that they're going to hate, something that they're not going to have fun with, because I don't think they're going to really increase in a lot of skills if they're not really having some sort of positive experience. So um, you can put this in the chat box. I don't know if it really made a poll, but what is your goal for your child during the summertime? Yes, this is not a poll. This is yeah. for the Q&A box. So you're able to view that, right, Justine? Yep, I have it up then. Perfect. Awesome. And while we're waiting, Justine, do you mind walking through, you know, examples specifically from the social beginnings program, how it sort of hits all, in your table on the slide previous? Um, how yeah. it hits all those different components and what that what that could look like? Yeah, um, I can go back. I don't see anything in the chat right now, so I can. I'm happy to kind of go back. Oh, never mind. People, um, <laughs> while you guys are answering, so, um, oops, sorry, guys. I'll go back to the little slide so I can just see it. Um, so for social beginnings, um, kind of discuss how they're goal goal oriented. Every kid that comes through the social beginnings program is given a treatment plan that is done by a behavior analyst. 
It's a thorough treatment plan that's specific to your child. It's almost kind of like an IEP, but a little bit more different, more social, more um, focused on social opportunities. So the assessments that are we going to be doing is focused on what social deficits your child has. It can range from joint attention to social language, self-regulation, nonverbal language, as well as social play. And so each kid will have their own goals and they'll be working on those goals in the group therapy. Um, it supports development of friend relationships or friendships. I see many friendships come out of the social beginnings program. And when they some of these kids will come to our after school program and they are extremely excited to see each other and they have created really great friendships from the program. Um, we do support the development of age appropriate skills. We do have different levels and um, different levels based on their age as well as level. So we have an early beginner group, an elementary group, a tween group and a teen group. And we will slot kids in the um, groups based on their age and level so that they're with peers at around the same level as in age. Um, we kind of discussed insurance before. Uh, the social beginnings program does is covered by insurance, but it depends on what insurance you have. So I do stress that you talk to your insurance to see if applied behavior analysis is covered because the social beginnings program is a social program that utilizes the principles of applied behavior analysis. We have lots of structured learning opportunities. It's a little bit more of structured play where we um, will set up certain, uh, I'm trying to give an example right now, we'll set up probably a game and we will, let's say we have kids that have difficulty with flexibility. We might change the rules of the game, such as Candyland. Maybe we'll play it backwards and kind of working on this flexibility skill. So it's a structured learning opportunity. It's a play opportunity. Uh, we know that two kids have maybe difficulty with sharing. We might, and they both love this one toy. We might sit down and practice sharing that one toy. Um, it all depends on your child's goals as well as um, their peers around them and what the opportunities we're able to contrive. Um, and again, it supports the preventive prevention of aggression. They're getting that structure through the entire day. Uh, the, the clinicians at the social beginnings program have a very tight schedule and they have it. Those kids could tell you the schedule and probably could walk you through the day by the end of the week or not in the week at the end of the program. But they follow a specific schedule, keep it very structured so that the kids aren't you know, worrying too much about what's coming next. And they're kind of focused on um, increasing their social skills. Okay, I will get to the Q&A now and I'll go to the next slide. Okay, all right, so I see some work on social skills and enhanced communication skills, awesome. Um, improving social skills, making friends, um, keeping busy off electronics, definitely a big one when it less than that screen time. Maintaining skills already learned, have a regular structure outside the school year, I love it. A safe place to learn, to share and make friends. I love the safe place, it's so important. Um, ensuring that um, your child continues to increase in her speech as well as improving activities and daily living. Oh, I love all these answers, guys. I really appreciate you participating. Uh, to not regress, gain social skills and enjoy while learning and meeting new people. Goals to increase um, social skills and ability to problem solve and do non-preferred activities without getting upset. That's definitely something that's very important to work on. Taking a break from academics and ABA routines, improve social skills with other individuals, uh, like such as children's or instructors and have fun with sports and art activities. Um, and then we have a question I will get to right after this. Um, I love all the answers from that. And one important thing that I really like seeing is that you want to make sure your child is having fun. We don't want anything to be aversive. We want to make sure that they're having fun during the summer months and they can truly um, enjoy what they're doing and, and learning at the same time. And so we got a question, uh, what is the age range for the social beginnings program and your summer programs? That's a really great question. So we have an age range of three to 17. Um, typically it's four to 17, but I do believe we accept three. Um, but Emily, if you, I, if you want to clear that up for me, but typically it's three, but I've saw an advertisement that said four, that's incorrect. It's three to 17. Sure. Um, does Medicaid cover this program? Do you have any other, have to have private insurance? I don't believe we take Medicaid, but uh, we, at the end of the presentation, I do have a phone number and an email that you can contact, um, that you can get more information about that. Okay. All right. Oops. 
<clears throat> I meant to edit this, Emily, and I'm kicking myself for it. Okay. Um, so these are some, about a couple of weeks ago, I did a camp expo and it was an amazing experience. I saw so many parents and there was a ton of different camps that I didn't even know existed. So I tried to find camp expos for you guys. I will send the location and edit this. Um, so there's a Northern Virginia camp and summer fun expo. It's on February 24th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. I really stress you to go to some of these because you're going to find a lot of these different camps you didn't know existed. And it's just find whatever, you know, fits your child best. Another one that I found was an Anne Arundel County summer expo. This is going to be at Anne Arundel Community College. It's on March 2nd, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Again, it's just a great opportunity. If you're from Virginia, Virginia, I would suggest to go to Northern Virginia, Anne Arundel. That's going to be more in Maryland. I didn't find any in Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, a lot of them were kind of already finished. Um, but I'm sure you can kind of go on websites and kind of search, uh, which will get me to my next slide. Oh, not the next slide. That's going to be the one after. Um, we'll go over some websites you can also research. Did I miss it? I did. I'm so sorry, guys. All right. So resources to help you find the right camp for your child. So these are going to be some websites you can go on. So for just strictly camps, campsearch.com, summercamps.com, as well as research are going through your local YMCA or county recreation websites will also give you a great opportunity or great resources for finding a good camp for you. Now we want to look into more kind of programs. The acacamps.org is a great resource. There's campresource.com as well as kidscamp.com. And also if you're interested in our summer program, verbalbeginnings.com. Okay. And Justine, you did get a question in the chat yeah. box. Um, it was, will you guys be able to provide a link at the end of the presentation to the location of the different camps in different areas? So the slide that you just went over, I believe would be answering that question. Um, if you want to flip back to that really quickly. Um, so that, that slide, yes, thank you. That slide would be able to give um, you the specific resources that will list location. So I believe, I know Camp Resource pretty well. And I know for that one, you can type in sort of like the program or camp you're looking for. You can kind of use filters and then uh, type in different locations and it should be able to populate for you based off of your interest for that. So that's a really great one. Um, I'm not super familiar with the other ones, just seeing if you're able to provide any insight on some of those. Um, but we're not at the end of this going to give specific locations or recommendations. This is just more so as a resource for you all. Yeah. So basically what these websites were, they just went through, it's kind of almost like a search engine and you can like put in your child's age or any interest and it will show you what camps um, are in that area and just takes you directly to their website to get a little bit more information. So they're kind of more of like search engines. Um, and Emily, do we send this uh presentation out? Uh, we don't send out the presentation. Usually we try, we record it. Um, and if there's interest in it, we can always send it out after. Okay. All right. Oops. Oops. All right. So some takeaways. Um, so skill regression may occur during unstructured times, such as during the summer months, um, if you are concerned about skill regression during the summer months, consider seeking support, use resources just as summer camps and programs to help with that regression or fear that your child might regress. The next one is identifying your goals for a summer program or camp and look for a program that aligns with those goals. And the, and the last one is identify a summer camp or program that you believe will best support your child's needs and will allow them to have fun while learning. That's a very important one. So making sure that your child is enjoying their summertime because Summertime is a fun time. Um, and then if you just were interested in about the summer program here at Verbal Beginnings, it's from July 1st to August 16th. It is all day, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 3.30. This year we have two locations, which is in Columbia and Silver Spring. This is going to be based on medical necessity since these are um, uh, applied behavior analysis services. We do um, give services that are based on medical necessity. Um, so I kind of give you a background, but Social Beginnings is a social skills, um, is a social pro kids program exclusive to Verbal Beginnings that provides therapeutic opportunities for children to learn and develop social skills with their peers. The curriculum behind the fund is research driven and provides an opportunity for clinicians to monitor your child's progress during the time in group. 
Groups are matched with peers similar to age and skill level, and group sizes are also small and led by highly experienced BCBAs and registered behavior technicians. If you are interested in this, this is, um, I give you time to get out a piece of paper to write down the phone number and, or you can email begin at verbalbeginnings.com to get some more information. I do see some questions coming through. Uh, the Silver Spring location is, I believe, on Wayne Avenue. I cannot remember the name of the church, so that's probably not very helpful. It's like 888 Wayne Avenue. I don't know the address specifically, but it's a church in downtown Silver Spring. Um, so, so I have one uh, question. My child currently attends Verbal Beginnings. When will we be able to enroll in Social Beginning Summer Program? So if you are with the after school program currently, you should have gotten... Um, a for a sign up form for that already. If you are not with the social beginnings program, but you are in in home or center and interested, I would reach out to your clinical supervisor and they will fill out a form for you. Uh, we do not have a, a summer program in the Rockville Center this year, unfortunately. Okay. Another question is, do you have to, do you have to enroll for the entire duration of social beginnings or is it week by week? We do suggest you enroll for the entire uh, seven week program and the purpose is because the curriculum is designed specifically to address different skills each week. And so if your child missed a week, possibly would be missing um, specific parts of the curriculum that's essential. Okay, I'll just go to the next slide is also a question. So Okay. Just, you guys can... Justine, quick question for you. Um, going back to the slide on social beginnings, do you mind just providing a brief description of what it means to be based on medical necessity? Yeah, of course. So social beginnings is typically for kids who are showing um, deficits in social skills. Uh, so typically when a kid goes through their ABA journey, they will kind of start with a one-to-one -one therapy to help build their communication um, as well as um, sometimes daily living skills. And once they're starting to gain a lot of these skills with one-to-one -one ABA therapy, and they don't really typically need that one-to-one -one, or they're starting to fade out of that one-to-one, -one, then we kind of start with generalizing their skills in, across peer. So typically what Social Begins is, is a faded support program. So it's different from that typical one-to-one -one, where we have one um, therapist per four kids. So we're now fading those prompts. And the purpose of that is because we went out, want to kind of increase their independence and start building those skills with peers and um, generalizing them across multiple peers and kind of teaching those social skills. So an example would be the reason why we typically would like them to have you know, forms of functional communication is so that you know if they were sitting down and they wanted a toy from a peer, typically kids who need social skills is able to ask an adult, but they're not able to ask that peer. So we're working on generalizing, asking that skill. If they don't have those necessary skills, it's going to be a lot harder for them to ask those peers. And so there is our prerequisite skills for them to join. All right. Get back to my questions. Okay. Um, someone's asked me to explain ABA. Professional uh, Professionals have always recommended for my son, but never been able to explain it. It's a definitely, it's a big topic because it's pretty wide range. So applied behavior analysis, the best way I like to try to explain it is we increase skills through motivation. So we teach, um, for an example, if we have a kid who is at the table and is getting up, running away, um, throwing things, and we would take data on that and we would figure out he's doing this because he doesn't want to be at the table. So what we would do is we would give them a functional communication to get out of the table rather than throwing things. So we would have them, you know, requesting for a break, requesting for whatever item that he wanted to play with, and then kind of building up with that. And so we would say the motivation is he doesn't want to be at the table. And so we take that motivation and we teach functional language in order to get what he wants and then eventually kind of building on that skill. So it's, a, it's really centered around a, a lot of motivation and reinforcement for engaging in certain behaviors. Um, I don't know if I did a really good job. It is definitely a very complicated term to describe. Emily, if you can do a better job, yeah. let me know. Um, no, you did. You did good. I'll add to that a little bit. I think a good way of thinking about it from our lens is it's a scientific approach to understanding why behavior is occurring. 
So a behavior analyst is assigned to work with you and your children or your child to really understand why is my child you know, engaging in this or how can I help them to continue to develop um, a, you know, move through their developmental milestones. And so one way of looking at that from our lens is through that scientific approach, right? So we're looking at different, um, the, the use of ABA therapy is really looking at a set of different principles that allow us to focus on how behaviors change um, or how they're affected by the environment um, and how learning can take place for them. So that really helps us to really guide and shape how, our, how we develop a treatment plan for your child um, to increase those skills um, or to address certain behavioral challenges that you're having. Um, and it can look different for every single child. It really should. Everybody's treatment plans are individualized. Um, and, you know, from the social skill side of things, um, that, that that's a much more focused approach of ABA, what we're talking about today. But applied behavior analysis in general focuses on a whole array of different skills, including behavior, including communication, social skills, play skills. Um, so I definitely encourage you to reach out to Verbal Beginnings. Um, we can definitely give you a lot more information than we will in this short amount of time here. Um, but that's a great question. Um, and thank you for asking it. Right. Uh, another question, are we planning on having programs in Anne Arundel County area? For a summer program, we do not have a location for Anne Arundel County, unfortunately, but we do have a location in Millersville right now for our after school program. Oh, and you're welcome. <laughs> All right, any other questions? If you want to move to next month's slide, I'll talk about that. And if anybody has any other questions in the meantime, please feel free to use that Q&A box. We're happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, and while you're thinking of questions, I would love to just sort of orient you to the slide in front of you. So for next month's autism exploration, we will have one of our regional directors at Verbal Beginnings presenting on school collaboration. Um, she is she has an awesome background working within different school settings and has lots to offer from a how-to guide almost to uh, working on just collaborating with school, collaborating with different professionals within the school setting, including behavior analysts, SLPs, um, et cetera. So I hope that you can join us. The date is on March 12th at 5 p.m. We will be sending out a registration email. Um, if you're here, you're already on our email list. So you don't have to do anything on your end. Just keep an eye out in your inbox over the next week or two to get that registration email. I think you got another question there, Jesse. Oh, I can answer that actually. Please, can I get a recording of the session? Um, we do send out the recorded um, webinar a couple of days after. So I would keep an eye out in your email towards the end of this week for this recording. If there are not any other questions, um, I will wrap this up. I just want to say thank you so much, Justine, for this wonderful presentation. Thank you for walking us through uh, the difference between summer programs and summer camps um, and for giving us all some really great real life examples to help connect with. I also want to thank all the families for joining us this evening. I really appreciate your time um, for being here this afternoon, and we hope to see you next month for the school collaboration. Have a great evening, everybody.